Hey guys, it's Sharon with another coding interview tutorial. And this time we have longest increasing pass in a matrix. It is able to delete code hard, but as far as hard questions go, it's more on the lighter side. But if you couldn't solve this yourself, don't worry. It's a type of solutions that you only have to see once. So after you've watched this video, you'll be able to solve this type of questions very easily. So let's get straight into the problem description. We're given an M over N integer matrix, and we want to return the length of the longest increasing pass in the matrix. From each cell, you can go in one of four directions. You can go left, right, up, or down. You may not move diagonally or move outside of the boundaries. So if you look at the example, we're given this input matrix. And the correct output for this matrix is 4. And that is because the longest increasing pass is this one. And it contains four cells. So I think the problem description is pretty clear. Uh, let's move on to the solution. So actually, I want to solve a simpler problem first. Um, let's say we already know where the longest increasing path starts. So we're given this matrix and we are also given a starting point. And the question becomes, what is the length of the longest increasing path that starts at this position? So remember, we can go in one of four directions. We can go left, up, right or down. And in this case, um, only three of those directions are valid because the down direction is outside the boundaries of the matrix. And of these three um, valid directions, only one is increasing, right? Because only three is larger than two. Now, because there is only one direction we can go in, uh, the longest increasing path that starts at this position is really just this cell plus the longest increasing path that starts at this position. So now what we want to know is what is the length of the longest increasing path that starts here, right? Now from this position, we have three valid increasing directions. So this cell can link to the longest increasing path that starts here, or to the one that starts here, or to the one that starts here. So which one are we going to choose? Well, obviously we're going to choose the longest one. So hopefully you can already kind of feel the recursion formula starting to form here. And what we're basically saying is that the longest increasing path that starts at position ij is 1 for the current position plus the maximum between the longest increasing path that starts at each of the four directions. And of course, only valid increasing directions are considered. So if we go back to our example, we now need to find the maximum between the paths in these uh, three directions. The longest increasing path that starts at this position has length 1. That is because there is nowhere to go from this cell. It is surrounded by smaller values. The length is 1 because it only contains the cell itself. Same goes for this cell. It is surrounded by smaller or equal values. So there is nowhere to go and the length is 1. From this cell, we can go in one direction. We can go here. And then from this 6, we again have nowhere to go. So the length is 1. And now that we have reached the point where we have nowhere left to go, we can start to roll back. So if we stopped at this position, we want to roll back one step. And now we are here. And the longest increasing path that starts at this position is 1 for the current cell plus 1 for the maximum between all of the valid increasing directions. So 2. We roll back one step again, and now we are here. And the longest increasing path for this cell is again 1 for the current cell, plus 2 for the maximum between all valid increasing directions, so 3. And finally, we go back one last step, and we are here. And the longest increasing path that starts here is 1 for the current cell, plus 3 for the uh, only valid increasing path which is 4, and this is the answer for this uh, question. Now, let's get back to our original problem where we don't know the starting point. Now, before we continue with this, I have a little side note here. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this looks a lot like dynamic programming. And it does, but not exactly. In simple dynamic programming, we would know in advance where to start and the order of dependencies. We would have to know in advance which cells have no valid increase in directions because these are the cells that have no dependencies, so we can start from there and move backwards into the cells that connect to them. Then we move backwards again, and so on. It is possible to go that route if you perform topological sorting first. In my opinion, this is complete overkill. It is way too complicated, even though it is a correct answer. Uh, what we're going to do is a lot simpler. So let's uh, forget about dynamic programming. What we're going to do is give each cell a chance to be the starting point, we find the longest increasing path that starts at that point, and then we take the maximum out of all of the points. And now we have one final issue we need to solve, and the issue is many, many duplicate computations. For example, when we reach this cell, we're going to compute the longest increasing path that starts here. But then when we reach this cell, we're going to need this value again because it's part of its path. And then when we reach this cell, we're going to need this value again because it's again part of its path. So as you can see, it adds up. 
And uh, the most natural and best solution for this is just to cache the results. So once we computed this value once, we're going to just put it in a matrix. And when we need this value again, we're just going to pull it from the matrix and we're not going to compute it all over again. That's going to save us a lot of time. It takes us from an exponential time complexity to a linear one. So it is a very important part of this solution. It's also a very common optimization technique. So it's good to keep that in mind because it can help you with a lot of other questions. So now uh, coding this is going to be the easy part. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's start by getting the number of rows and calls. I always do this check, never hurts. And then we wanna create another matrix, just like the original one for the cache. And now for the loop that iterates over each cell and gives each cell a chance to be the starting point. And we're going to need another variable for the max uh, path. So max path is going to be the maximum between the previous max path and the maximum increasing path that starts at this position. So we're going to do that with a function. So let's call it longest inc path. And we'll need to give it the matrix and the current position. And we're also going to need the, to give it the cache, but let's just keep the cache uh, here. And also the rows and calls because I don't want to have to pass it to every function. So just for convenience, I think, I think that will work. And then we want to return this value. Now let's implement this function. As I said, this function is going to return the maximum increase in pass that starts at a certain position. So it's going to accept the matrix and current positions. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check if we already have this value in the cache. So if we have it, we can just return it. I mean, we can just return the value that we have in cache. We don't have to uh, compute anything. And then if we don't, then we need to iterate over each of the four directions. So let's do it this way. So the first one is the top direction, and then this is the left one, and this one is down, and this one is right. So we need to have a value here for the max direction um, path, and take the coordinates for the current direction. Now, before we go in each direction, we wanna check if the direction is valid and if it's increasing. So the way we do that is First of all, we check that it's valid and that it's increasing. So the, maxi the matrix at ij is less than the matrix at dear i, dear j. And then if this is true, we wanna update the maximum direction path to be the maximum between the previous uh, max direction path and the path of the current direction. Now that we have the maximum path out of all of the four directions, we wanna add one for the current cell and we wanna cache the results. Now let's just return this value and I think we're good. Let's try it. No, we didn't implement this valid function. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so let's try to submit this. So that is a success, so we are done with this part and a few words about the time complexity. It's going to be linear, as I said, it's linear to the size of the matrix, so O of M times N. And that is because when we cache the result for each, um, for each cell, uh, we never compute them again. So in total, we only do a constant amount of operations for each cell, so that's a linear time complexity. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you have any requests for other questions that you want me to cover, uh, put them in the comment section and I will try to make this happen. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.